Welcome to our lecture online. In this example, in the denominator we have an x squared instead of just an x. But the methodology compared to the previous example will be exactly the same. We're going to use partial fractions. Of course, in this case, we're going to need three fractions. That means we can write 1 over x squared times a plus bx squared. We can write this as a over x plus b over x squared plus cx plus d over a plus bx squared. And now we're going to multiply both sides of that equation by the common denominator, which of course is x squared plus times a plus bx squared. So we end up with 1 is equal to, in this case we have ax times a plus bx squared plus b times a plus bx squared plus cx plus d, Oop, that should be a little bit higher, multiplied times x squared. And now we're going to multiply all that out on the right side and try to figure out what a, b, c, and d are equal to. So we have 1 is equal to a small ax plus a small b x cubed plus b a plus b small b x squared plus c x cubed plus d x squared. Wow, a lot of terms on the right side and only one on the left side. Notice we have a constant on the left side and we have a single constant on the right side, which means that 1 must equal b times a, which means that b equals 1 divided by a. So we already figured out one of our four constants. Now let's see what else do we have. We have one term that has an x to the first power. We don't have any on the left side, which means that 0 is equal to a times a, which means a must equal 0. All right, whenever one of them is 0, that makes it a little bit easier. Now let's go for, we have an x squared term and an x squared term there here. So we'll take the coefficients, add them together, and set equal to 0. So 0 is equal to big BB plus D, which means that D is equal to minus BB. And B was 1 over A, which means that D is equal to minus B over A. So now we have D as well. And all we have to now figure out is what c is equal to. And notice we have an x cubed term and an x cubed term. No x cubed terms on the left side. So 0 is equal to the coefficient here, which is a times b, and plus c. But remember that a was equal to 0. If a is equal to 0, that means c must be equal to 0 as well. And so that means we have all four constants, we can plug that into our constants up there. So a is 0, b is 1 over a, c is 0, and d is minus b over a. So that means that this integral cannot be written as a sum of two integrals. This is equal to the integral of, well since a is 0, we go over here, b is 1 over a over x squared. So I can pull out 1 over a, and we have a dx over x squared, which is easy to integrate. c is 0, d is minus b over a, so we have minus b over a times the integral of dx divided by a plus bx squared. And that one, we should remember how to integrate that as well, because we saw that a few videos back. So now we can go ahead and integrate each one of these. So this becomes equal to, this is like x to the minus 2, add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, so this becomes minus 1 over a times 1 over x. And then here we have minus b over a times, and that would be 1 over the square root of a times b times the inverse tangent of the square root of b over a times x, and then we have a constant of integration. And of course, we could simplify this a little bit more, so this could be written as minus 1 over ax, and here that would be 
Hmm. That would be equal to minus 1 over a times the square root of b over a times the inverse tangent of plus a constant of integration. And I guess I don't need that bracket anymore. And now we have the result of that particular integral. So again, using partial fractions works quite nicely for this example. And that's how it's done.